the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. As we gather, we hear again the good news of the angels proclaimed. God has come for all people through the birth of the one named Jesus. Through Bethlehem's manger, God comes into the chaos, messiness, and vulnerability of the world. In all things and in all times, we rejoice that God comes to save us and reigns in love. We come to adore Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. Amid the troubles and fears of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. I invite you to take a moment of silence for reflection. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our lack of faith and trust. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive our neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. 
forgive our selfishness and complacency. With great joy, the angels proclaimed, Do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus, who is Savior, Christ and Lord, our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God sent from heaven above be with you all. Let us pray. Incarnate God, during this Christmas season, we give you thanks for sending your Son to bring light to our darkness. Grant that we, like the angels over Bethlehem, may sing your praises in our hearts and lives. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself out with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hands of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. A reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Snow frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. 
young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful and for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. A reading from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about them. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanael in the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here ends the reading. Grace and peace to you all on this first Sunday of Christmas. I'm Pastor Lori Scow Anderson, and I serve as the Bishop of the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin. I'm grateful that we can be in partnership in ministry. Thank you. Thank you for your support of the work we do together in Jesus' name. We have all just celebrated our first and hopefully only Christmas during a pandemic. This year, our worship and family celebrations have been different, very different. This joyful season has been tinged with a bit of loneliness, disappointment, loss, and fear. We've all tried to make the best of it. And the hope of it all was that on Christmas Eve, we heard again how God came down to earth to a people who at the time were also struggling with great challenges. The miracle of Christmas is that God came down to us as a baby. A baby! During a very difficult time in history, God sent, of all things, a baby into the world. When the time came, that baby was born in Bethlehem, the city of his ancestor, David. When the time came, the baby's parents, Mary and Joseph, brought the baby to Jerusalem, to the temple, to present him to the Lord as was the custom. Every firstborn should be dedicated to the Lord with an offering. These first-time parents wanted to do everything right by their baby. Mary and Joseph wanted to do it right, but what did they know? He was their firstborn. 
Mary, how do you wrap the swaddling cloth so it stays tight? Joseph, how do you hold the baby to comfort him when he cries at night? When are you going to feed him, Mary? How do you keep him safe, Joseph? At least these parents didn't have to decide the right model of car seat or stroller to buy. At least this baby wasn't born during a pandemic. Mary and Joseph wanted to do what was right for their baby. On the eighth day, the baby was circumcised and brought to the temple. It was the right thing to do. Just think, during a difficult time, God sent of all things a baby, a baby savior into the world. A baby changes everything. How many of you who are parents had well-meaning relatives tell you that a baby would change your life and things would never be the same again? A baby changes everything. The birth of a baby is disruptive. It turns the parents' lives upside down. The birth of baby Jesus disrupted everything. It turned the world order upside down. Jesus' birth, his life and teachings about God's kingdom, his death and resurrection changed the world. In our gospel reading today from Luke chapter 2, we learn that a man named Simeon was at the temple. He was a holy man, and the Holy Spirit guided him to Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. Old Simeon took the child Jesus into his arms and held him. Simeon held Jesus. Think about that for a moment. Jesus is handled by a human being. Jesus is haveable, holdable. This is the incarnational wonder of the Word of God made flesh that Simeon held in his hands. Simeon held the baby Savior of the world in his hands, like we hold the Bible, the Word of God in our hands, like we hold the bread of Holy Communion in our hands. German pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, God truly chose to be bound to historical human beings. God is present, haveable, graspable in the Word. Simeon held the baby Jesus in his arms and told these first-time parents that this was no ordinary child. Simeon recognized that the time had come. God fulfilled the promise and sent a Savior, a light to reveal the good news to all people. This work of saving the world would come at a great cost and great pain to these parents. Before they left the temple, Simeon blessed them. And then there is Anna the 84-year-old prophet Anna. She too knew there was something special about this child Jesus. She knew that the time had come for the redemption of God's people in Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph didn't know what was happening. Is this what normally happens when a baby is brought to the temple? Do the temple grandparents welcome every baby like this? Simeon gives them a blessing but warns them that a sword would pierce Mary's heart. Anna prays and sings praises to God for a baby, their baby, for Jesus. And then it was time for them to go. They had done all the right things. They had finished everything they needed to do. They left the temple and they went home to Nazareth. They took the baby home. And they tried, as every parent through history, to do the right thing and raise a healthy child. Jesus grew up. And in the years to come, Mary and Joseph had plenty of time to think about what had happened in that temple that day and wonder what it meant. Now here we are, thousands of years later, reading this story and wondering to ourselves, so what? So what does this mean for me, for us as Christians, for those of us who every day try to follow in the way of Jesus, to do the right thing by Jesus? What does this story mean? What touched my heart when I read this story this year in 2020 is the image I have in my mind of the old man Simeon holding the baby in his arms and the words Simeon prayed at that moment, that conversation he had with God while he held God's son in his arms. Maybe it struck me new this year because a few months ago I held my newborn granddaughter in my arms. There's a wonderful connection that occurs across the generations, grandparent to grandchild. Perhaps that experience is more profound this year because of the kind of year we've all had. The pandemic has made birthing a baby into the world more frightening and dangerous. It has been more difficult to gather together, and I haven't been able to hold her very often. Everyone is anxious and fearful. As I talk to the folks of our synod here in the northwest corner of Wisconsin, I've heard how young families and parents are struggling. They ask, what's the right thing to do? 
Do, do they take their child to daycare? Do they keep their child at home and try to work from home? What about those who don't have a choice, who have to work and take their child to, to daycare and hope that they don't all get sick? How do parents have time to care for young children at home and work from home simultaneously? How do they homeschool their children, make sure their child is paying attention to online classes and finishing their homework? It is so challenging for families right now. I wonder how can the grandmas and grandpas help? What can we do to ease their burden a little? How can we be Simeon and Anna to the babies in our community? Have you heard the story about the babushkas? They are the Russian grandmothers who taught their grandchildren to love Jesus, even when it was illegal to be Christian in Russia. The Soviet Union was officially an atheist country for 74 years. While their parents worked, it was these grandmothers, the babushkas, who raised the next generation of Russian children, teaching them the Christian faith. The communist government had dismantled the churches. The babushkas refused to allow the flame of faith to go out in their grandchildren. The government destroyed cathedrals and churches. They sent the Russian clergy to prison camps. They discriminated against believers. These old ladies with head scarves were more powerful than the communists would ever guess during all those years of official Soviet atheism. They were the true soul of Russian society. An independent poll discovered that now nearly 75% of Russians say they are religious believers. And this is a truly remarkable statistic. It is a testament to the grandmas and grandpas, the babushkas, who took a stand for their faith and shared that faith with the next generation. The babushkas were like Simeon and Anna. They held the next generation in their arms. They kept the flame of hope and faith burning. They guided the next generation so they would come to know and love Jesus, even in the most challenging of times. In the last months, I've listened to pastors and youth directors talk about the challenges of faith formation, Sunday school, and confirmation during the pandemic. They are doing the very best they can with Zoom classes and sending materials home for families to do together. But they're also telling me that some families are really struggling to participate regularly in the Zoom Sunday school or confirmation meetings. They are exhausted. The parents are exhausted and stretched thin. Doing school online and then adding Sunday school or confirmation seems like too much to expect for some. I'm really concerned about the next generation hearing the story about Jesus. And I'm thinking about the baptismal promises that parents, godparents, and congregations make to teach their children the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. It's not just the parents' responsibility. Dear friends, it's all of our responsibility to nurture children in the Christian faith. I'm wondering if we could be like the babushkas, like Simeon and Anna, and help the next generation come to know and love Jesus. Maybe we could all become temple grandparents, and for the rest of the pandemic and beyond, find somewhere to share the faith with the next generation. If you're a godparent or if you have grandchildren, ask their parents how you can help. Could you help them with their Sunday school lesson over the phone? Can you Zoom or FaceTime and read them Bible stories? Could you Zoom in at night and do bedtime prayers to the other? Can you let them know that you are praying for them? Can you make sure that they have children's Bibles in their homes? Make them a prayer bear or a prayer shawl to hold when they pray or when they're frightened. If you don't have a godchild or a grandkid, Borrow some. Every kid needs caring adults in their lives. Volunteer to be a prayer partner with one of the confirmation students at your church. Volunteer to set up prayer partners for all the confirmation students at your church. Host a cross-generational faith-sharing time on Zoom. Imagine this. Imagine grandparents and grandkids telling each other their faith statements. At a church, I served a group knitted prayer shawls for all of the confirmation students and gave a lesson on prayer. The students loved it. Cross-generational learning is so important. There is so much we can learn from the Simeons and Annas in our congregation. There is so much wisdom that we can share with all the generations. Those of us who are 50 or 60 years old are part of the boomer generation. Those of us who are 70 or 80 years old are part of the builder generation. We have a great opportunity to share and model our faith in Christ Jesus with the next generation so that Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, and the Alpha Gen will also come to know and love Jesus. Like Simeon and Anna, we are holding hope in our arms, hope of the future. We are part of a circle of generations, a circle of life. 
I believe that we do not live to ourselves, but we live for the sake of the next generation. What are you willing to do so that the next generation will come to know and love Jesus? During these difficult times, it's more important than ever for all generations to work together to share the load, to share the faith, so that the next generation will come to know and love Jesus. Simeon held baby Jesus in his hands. When we are able to gather again safely for Holy Communion, we hold the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. We hold Jesus in our hands. When we read the Bible and hear the good news, we're holding Jesus, the Word of God, in our hands. Martin Luther said that the Bible was the cradle that held Christ. When we care for the least, the lost, or the little ones, we are holding Christ himself. These are challenging days. This pandemic and all the other challenges we faced in this country this year have been very difficult. But there is hope. God's got us. God is holding us. God came down to earth as a baby to give us hope. Let us share that hope with the next generation. Amen. The old man in the temple waiting in the court waiting for the answer to a promise all at once he sees them in the morning sunshine couple coming carrying a baby now that i have held him in my arms my life can come to an end let your servant now depart in peace Cause I've seen your salvation He's the light of the Gentiles And the glory of his people Israel Mary and the baby come And in her hand five shekels Christ to redeem her baby boy The baby softly cooing Nestled in her arms Simeon takes the boy and starts to sing Now that I've held him in my arms My life can come to an end Let your servant now depart in peace Cause I've seen your salvation He's the light of the Gentiles And the glory of his people Israel Now's the time to take him in your arms Your life will never come to an end He's the only way that you'll find peace He'll give you salvation He's the light of the Gentiles And the glory of his people is right Let us join together in prayer. Gracious God, you come from heaven above into the midst of our world. Fill our hearts with the joy of the angels at your birth. You come from heaven above to the lowliest of human conditions. Watch over those in need, the sick, the hungry, the grieving. You come from heaven above to walk the way of the cross. Guide us to follow your path of forgiveness, mercy, and peace. You come from heaven above to become flesh and live among us. May we see your glory, full of grace 
and truth. Amen. We invite you to take a moment to give generously to your congregation. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The word is revealed in a manger in a simple bread and wine. Come, meet Christ in this meal. If your congregation is engaging in home communion, I invite you to pause this video to share the communion meal. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, we give you thanks for the gifts of bread and wine, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us out into your world to proclaim with joy glory to God in the highest heaven, who unto us the Son has given. Amen. Amen. 
A mighty God who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.